Hi, Kirsten. Good morning. Look at your hair. You look lovely. Hi, good morning. Thanks. Good morning, good morning. How are you guys? Nice to see you all. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. Oh, I love this class. I just love this class. And I love your work, guys. Everything's looking so good. I just realized that I need my glasses. Hi. One of my many pairs of glasses. I'm ordering some glasses online, and my husband's like, you have three pairs already. <laughs> I'm obsessed about glasses. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening in England. Is Victoria there? Oh, yeah. I want to say congratulations. Victoria is one of my clients in England, Christian's little sister, and she just booked a commercial, her first one. Good morning, sweetheart. Congratulations. You're going to catch up with your big brother. You got to keep going, Christian. <laughs> this is lovely news. Thank you. It was very nice to wake up to that this morning and find that out. Yes. Thank you for your help. Oh, you're so welcome. It was an absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Oh, Liam, is your, um, I just want to let you know that your, your work is very, very good. I didn't get a chance to email back, but it's very, very good. It's kind of busy around here. Very good work. Thank you. Yeah. For me, it's been extremely busy with auditions. I teach a lot of grown-ups too, so I've been doing a lot of coaching with auditions lately. It's insane. Today, we're going to work on how to do the voiceover for a documentary. Okay? So with the documentary, am I recording? Yes, I am. Okay, good. With the documentary, it's not a big rush to, to get this stuff in. The, the last class is coming up, but you don't have to have the documentary stuff in right away. What's really important, or any of it right away, because I have to edit it all. So it's, it's really important that you do the work and you like the work that you do. Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you about how to do point of view. And I'm very lucky to have a wonderful student who's a documentary filmmaker who I can use to help teach this course. Um, and when I was ma making up this course this morning, I started to cry. And I was like, oh, I miss. I was putting all the pictures in for the course. And um, my student, he's such a sweet, sweet, sweet man. And it makes me very proud that I taught him and he's done so well. He continues to do really great work in documentary filmmaking as well as doing um, TV series. So he's a, a director and a producer and his name is Brent Hodge. And, but his, his company is called Hodgey Film. And he's very silly and wonderful. And he's got a little bunny rabbit for his, his icon for his film company. And one of the things, um, that's okay, Grace and Isla, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, one of the, one of the, some of, some of the things he does are just quite silly, quite silly, but he's also very, very kind. And it's, to me, it's, it's almost a, a more important story than um, the work that we're going to do today is how important it is when people um, get a little bit of power as actors or creators, that they keep helping people out, you know, people who need help. Because all of us get a little help in our journey, right? Like with Christian's sister, with Victoria, I helped her out with a little coaching and I got a really sweet little note this morning saying that she'd, um, that she'd booked and that feels really good. So you want to really say thank you to people and, and help people who, um, who may need help because people will definitely help you going on this journey. So um, I'm gonna share the screen with you and show you a little bit about Hodge. No, that's not Hodge. That is, um, that is Beyonce. You may recognize her. She's quite a famous pop star, but she used to be in a band called um, Destiny's Child. 
And you may wonder how this relates to voiceover, but it does. Because when you're doing a voiceover for a documentary, you are not the star. The pictures are the star. You're like the backup singers. So we all know Beyonce. I can hear, I'm just gonna check in on my um, participants here and see if I can, I think I might have to mute you all again. I can hear something. There we go. Okay, so with the, with the documentary, you're not the star of the documentary as the voice. You are the backup singers. So see these two women here? They were all in a band with Beyonce, but she really came, she really became the star of the band because she really was the star of the band. Um, the documentary is the star. You, the voice is the backup singers. So you're just making the pictures in the documentary more beautiful. So when you do the voiceover for a documentary, you're not trying to make people pay attention to you. You're trying to make people pay attention to the star, which is the pictures in the documentary. A documentary, sometimes people think they're boring, but they're not always boring. Sometimes they are super boring, but I didn't include any of the boring ones in this, um, in this class because I don't want to teach you how to do boring things. I want to teach you how to do fun things. We're going to do, uh, you're going to do a, a, a small voiceover part for my friend's um, art gallery and it's called Title Arts Gallery, Title Art Gallery. And it used to be, um, believe it or not, it used to be a forestry building, but now it's an art gallery and it's very beautiful. And it has all sorts of places where you can go and make art and you can do painting and you can do, you can dye clothes, you can do pottery, you can do, um, photography, any kind of thing. And you know how much she charges for you to come and stay for a month and do work? A hundred bucks. It's very cheap because she supports artists and it's right in the middle of nowhere. There's no, there's no, um, there's no internet or anything like that there Are you, and no cell phones or anything like that, but it's a beautiful place to, to do art. So that's the, the little documentary we're going to do for my friend and you're gonna tell stories. Another thing they have there is puppet shows. So they ha have a, somebody who um, does puppet shows and every, all the kids come and watch the puppet shows in the art gallery and it's really beautiful. It's right on the ocean. So you're right beside the ocean. You can go down for a swim and then go do some art. It's really cool. So that's what we're doing a documentary for. But you are gonna be the backup singers for the beautiful art gallery. So you are gonna be collaborating with me. Collaborating means working together. So you're going to be working with me and the art gallery to make something beautiful. So you imagine also another way to think of this is there's a singer and you're the band. So you can be the, not only the backup singers, but you could be a violin or you could be um, a piccolo. You can be whatever you want and I'm gonna help you do that. So this is my student Haji's um, uh, documentary company called Haji Films. And that's his little icon that he made when he was a student. So when Haji was a student, we were, I used to own a big school and we had a photocopy room in the big school. And Haji was in the photocopy room with me helping me put some scripts together. And he said, do you think I'm going to make it as an actor? And I said, I think you're going to make it as whatever you want, but I think you're really a filmmaker and you are going to be a filmmaker. And every once in a while, he sends me a little note saying, hey, remember in the photocopy room? I'm doing it, teach. So, or I'm doing it, coach. And it makes me very proud. So here he is. He's won lots of awards for his documentaries. That's him right there. See how cute and silly he is. He's really fun. Um, and that is a stuffed dog because he made a dog, or not a stuffed dog, a dog, whatever those things called. Anyway, it's a dog, a pretend dog because he made a documentary called Who Let the Dogs Out? He makes funny documentaries. He makes silly documentaries, but they're always very truthful. And here's another thing. 
Haji lives in New York City. I live in Lund, population almost 300. Not very many people here. There's millions of people in New York. I just happen to have some friends who were making a documentary about Lund, population almost 300. And they could not get it, anybody to watch their documentary because, you know, documentaries about small towns are not really all that popular. But I called Haji and he called his friends at CBC and it got on CBC, which is really great. And then he flew all the way out from New York to, um, to watch the documentary in the little pub that we have here. We have one pub. And so he flew all the way out with his mom and his dad and his girlfriend, actually his stepmom and his dad and his girlfriend, to come out and, and watch the film. So not only is he a very wonderful documentary maker, he's a really good person. He's a really, really lovely man. And that comes through in his work. So this is the film. Where I live, there's a lot of hippies and they like to swim naked in the ocean if they're 80 or if they're eight. So that's a bunch of them going to jump naked into the ocean. <laughs> and it's very funny, this documentary. They're very silly people. But he's also written or uh, produced a, a documentary about My Little Pony. So My Little Pony documentary is about grown bo men who like um, My Little Pony. They're called bronies. And this, <coughs> you can imagine the voiceover for this documentary would be kind of silly. You wouldn't have to be super serious about, about um, this kind of documentary. This kind of documentary, you might be like, kind of curious, like what makes people want to live like this? What a curious way. Why do you want to leave the city or leave the towns and go to a place that has no internet and no, you know, actually at the time when people came here in the 70s, there was no internet, but no, no population at all, just the woods. And a whole bunch of people came out here and decided that they wanted to, to um, live in the woods by the ocean. So that might be a little bit more serious, but not totally serious. This one, you might be silly. You know, you might, your point of, I'm talking to you more about how you speak the words, so your point of view. So you might wanna be a bit silly here on this kind of documentary. You might wanna be curious on the other one. So your voice on this one would be like, um, if you're introducing, the end of the road. You wouldn't be like, the end of the road. You might be like, the end of the road. Hmm. So you want to introduce how you want the audience to feel about the documentary. Um, a brony tale, you might have a little, a, a little giggle in your voice, like a film about men who like My Little Pony. So you might be a little bit amused about it because it's not, it's not very usual or people don't think it's very usual, but actually there's a lot of grown-ups who like My Little Pony. It's amazing. This is a film called I Am Chris Farley, who is a, um, a comedian on um, Saturday Night Live. You guys wouldn't know him, but he used to be one of the most famous people in the world. He was very, very funny, and he was very loved by the other actors on, on Saturday Night Live, which is a really big show. And he, he was very silly, very warm, and very loving, but he died. He was also very fat, and he died, and he did, uh, he, and he abused his body. He, he, he drank a lot of alcohol and that sort of thing, and that makes people die young. So he, he died young. And so this documentary is celebrating the life of someone who is full of life, but it's also kind of sad. So the tone in your voice should feel like that when you're talking about I am Chris Farley. It should feel, it should feel happy, amused, but also a little, a little bit sad. So you would say, I am Chris Farley. So something like that, you would have those, that kind of a mix of tone in your voice. Um, I really, some of these documentaries are not going to be good for, a, for kids, 
but some of them are. So if you want to, if you want to get your mom and dad or mom or dad or dads or moms or whatever you've got, if you want to get them to help you um, see little bits of them, it would be good to see them. Little bits that are good for you. This is a documentary about the pistol shrimps. They're, a, now, as you may or may not know, but you're now going to know, I love basketball. And this is a documentary about a bunch of women who decided to play basketball together, even though they weren't very good. And that's sort of the story of my life too. I love basketball, but I'm not that good. I love it so much I'm putting a basketball court in, in my property. That's how much I love it. But I'm super not good. I try, but I'm not good. And this is a documentary about um, making, doing something that you love even if you're not good at it and really going all the way. And eventually you do become pretty good at it. So for that, your voice might be something like the pistol shrimps. So you might be really excited about it. Like go, you might be enthusiastic and trying to get them to, you know, to win that kind of thing. So, so that's your point of view on this. Freaks and Geeks uh, was a show that was on on TV for only one year, but the people who were on that show became very famous um, and powerful actors and directors. And uh, the show was talked about how teenagers feel when, and sometimes younger folks too, how they feel when they're in school. Like you feel like a bit of a freak or you feel like a bit of a geek. And Sometimes that experience is, um, uh, you know, not very pleasant. Sometimes you feel pretty bad when people are calling you a freak or a geek. But sometimes it's really nice because you meet other people who are freaks or geeks like you. So, for example, if you're very smart, it's nice to have other very smart people to hang out with. So even though you might not be in the most popular crowd at school, you have your, your geek friends to hang out with. And if you're a freak, like somebody who's uh, an actor, for example, who's different from all the other kids, which makes you, so, sometimes people think that makes you a bit of a freak, then it's nice to meet other actors and hang out with them, kind of like in this class, even though we don't really hang out together, we have a group of people together who love the same thing. So that's really what Freaks and Geeks was about. It was about people finding the other people like them in a world that doesn't have a lot of other people like them. So, so this documentary, you might have a little bit of happiness in your voice because it feels good. It's like, Freaks and Geeks, yay! You know, might be very proud too. Freaks and Geeks, that's us. So that's, and that's, um, that's my student right there, Hodge, in the middle. He's at the Tribeca Film Festival. I think he, this documentary, won, I think all of these documentaries have won awards, but I know that this one did and it was very exciting for him. Um, who Let the Dogs Out? Does everybody know that song? Who Let the Dogs Out? Woof, woof. Okay, at this point, um, everyone should be able to, I'm going to um, make it so that everybody can now sing that song. So let's get everybody to sing that song. Everybody unmute themselves and on three, okay? One, two, three. Let the dogs out. Oh, no. That's got to be louder. That song is full of joy and silliness. And yeah, louder on three. One, two, three. Nice. Whoa, we got a real singer here. I'm gonna meet you all again. Um so that song was hugely popular. You guys know that song, and it came out a million years ago. It was a long time ago that that song came out but it was very, very popular. And the, the reason there was a documentary about that song isn't because it was very popular. It was because 
they got sued. The people who did the song got sued because somebody else said that they made up that phrase, who let the dogs out. So it became, um, uh, when you get sued, it's somebody trying to get money from you for, for either stealing their, their, their intellectual, stealing the words that they wrote or not giving you enough money for using the words that they wrote. And this case was very important because lots of people can have the same idea at the same time. And that doesn't mean that they stole something. So it's very hard to prove that. So, so with this, you want to have, it's a very serious idea, even though it's kind of a funny song. So you really have to balance the way you would talk about something like this. You have to think about how do I feel about this? Cause it is kind of funny, you know? So you might want to do it in a serious way. Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? Who, who? You might want to do the emotional change after. So, so you would look at that and think, how would I, how am I going to talk about this? This is a very, you know, this is a very interesting story. So that's that. So all of the things we're talking about are point of view. Haji is also the, the showrunner and director for a show called A User's Guide to, to um, Cheating Death. And he's done a documentary about Uber drivers with Spike Lee, who is a very, very famous director, one, considered one of the best directors in the world. And um, he does a lot of um, documentaries with pop stars too. He did one with Carly Kloss. He's done all sorts of documentaries about different, um, different people as well as doing, um, he's done series and films too. But the most important thing for him is being truthful. And that's the most important thing for me too in, in the acting work and especially in the voiceover work for, for the, for the title arts documentary we're going to do. Um, even though none of you will have been to title arts, you, you're going to have to speak as though you have. So you're going to have, um, you're going to have the experience of going there through looking at it online. So there's not a, a the reason I'm doing this documentary for them is one, um, they let me use the, the exterior of the art gallery for the series I'm doing called Hotel Nowhere. So I'm pretending that the outside of the, their art gallery is a hotel. Um, and because of that, I felt like I wanted to do a little thank you for them. So I thought I could, in this class, it might be good for you guys to get experience doing a documentary voiceover. And also it would help you, um, it would help, help you learn about point of view, which is really important. Okay, Juliana, thanks for letting me know, honey. That's great. Um, this is recorded, so you'll be able to watch it after. Okay, so Juliana has to leave early, but we'll miss you, but it won't be the end of the world. So let's go to Tidal Arts Gallery, and I'm gonna show you some pictures of it. So you need to develop a point of view on this, and I'm gonna help you with it. So you're not going to be, this is not going to be on your own trying to figure this out. I will help you with it, okay? So this is the first page and it says, inspire, connect, nourish, create. So everybody knows what those, perhaps knows what those words are. What does it mean to you to be inspired? I'm going to get you to unmute yourself and everybody can just tell me what it means to be inspired. What does it mean to be inspired? Anybody can jump in. How about what inspires you? You just jumped in. Sorry, Elena. What inspires you? Oh, what makes you feel... That's a very good question. What makes you feel like, and I'm stalling a bit to get the answer to come to my head. <laughs> what, 
What makes you feel like you want to create something? So for me, I'm very inspired, very inspired. not directly inspired, but kind of like a side inspiration when I walk my dog. I have very, very beautiful property with, and we made a path around the property. Like a, the kind of path you see in the woods because I have woods in my property. So I'm very inspired when I walk my dog through the, through the woods. I feel very like, like I come up with all sorts of ideas when I'm walking through the woods. So the, the woods inspire me, paintings inspire me. They give me ideas. So what kind of things give you ideas? Sometimes it's art, sometimes it's nature, sometimes it's people. I'm very inspired by my students. My students are very inspiring often. Um, Hodge, for example, when he flew out from New York to Lund, which at his own expense, and he paid for it to come all the way out to do that, which is probably at least $2,000, maybe more, just to fly out and see a documentary in a pub with 30 people, <laughs> there's only 200 and something people in the town. So it was very, very nice and, and very kind and inspiring to me to be that kind to people, to care that much. So what, what makes you feel like you wanna be better or you wanna make art or you wanna, if you're a basketball player, like you wanna be a great basketball player, what, what inspires you? Anybody? Are there any actors who inspire you? Um, this is a good, good question because you may not be thinking about these things yet. Yeah. When you watch a show and it makes you feel, it makes you laugh. Does anybody have a show that makes them laugh? The Simpsons. Wow. The Simpsons. Great. So that's a good one. Uh, the Simpsons is brilliant. So if you're watching The Simpsons and you're laughing, you might feel like I want to make other people laugh from watching The Simpsons. Kalina, you feel the same about The Simpsons? Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. So um, Lisa Simpson for me is inspiring. Like she's smart. She's she, um, she's talented, she can figure things out, she's hardworking, that's inspiring to me. Um, the, the show overall is inspiring to me because it's really good, it's really funny, and I love laughing. Now, who has a show that makes them feel like crying? Does anybody have a show that makes them feel like, that they like to watch, that makes them feel like crying? Anybody? No. <laughs> no. No. What about um did you have you guys seen Annie? The documentary or the the uh, musical? Yeah. You know when Annie doesn't have uh, a family? It's kind of sad, right? And then um Daddy Warbucks adopts her but she's not sure if he really loves her you know that that feeling that's kind of inspiring for me shows that are a little bit sad but also have have a happy ending those are kind of or even a happy process like a happy going through it all those are interesting for me also stories though so that's inspiring it's inspiring for me to write stories like that and to be a person like that who who has the best attitude in life you know who's got a lot of get up and go you know who just does things so that's very inspiring for me what about um what about shows about people who um say somebody who uh gets in a very bad accident and is paralyzed and then they work their way out of that like they're, they're really, they're really sick, maybe they've got cancer and they still run this big race or something. Does, do those inspire you when you see somebody who has a really tough time in life and they overcome them? Yes. No. Anybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Feel free to unmute yourself. Terry Fox. Oh my goodness. Galena, that's the perfect one. 
Terry Fox is inspiring to the whole world. He was a teenager who lost his leg to cancer, went on a run, and the whole world, he's raised, the, the whole world, especially Canada, but he's raised millions of dollars. It makes you want to be a good person. 18 and, What's that, honey? 18. AT makes you cry? Oh, you're not alone. I cry the ugly cry in ET. I cry the like <laughs> ET phone home. Oh my god, I can start crying now just thinking about it. Because I was like little when I first saw that film, like you, like younger than you guys. It's just like, oh yeah. ET, absolutely. ET does it for me every time. Our mom. Uh, your mom inspires yeah. us sometimes. Wow. That's really beautiful. Now I'm going to cry. That's very beautiful. Yeah, that is. Yeah, when you have a parent who inspires you, you're pretty much set for life because you know how to be as a human being. You know what to do. You know what kind of person to be. Somebody who, yeah, that's beautiful. Oh my God. I hope your mom is listening. I hope she hears that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> back there <laughs> good she's probably having a good cry uh hotel for dogs i love dogs tell i don't know about hotel I love for dogs. You so much. oh thank you i could use that yeah i'm getting a little bit clumped tell me christian about hotel for dogs How, why does that inspire you because um it inspired me um to have a coffee did just it yeah. Dogs didn't have a home, did they? Yeah, dogs didn't have a home. And I really oh. wanted one. So, yeah. That is a very sad story, too. A and then I, it just is. Okay. And they had a hotel for, like, dogs and stuff. And, and some parts were really funny. It's wonderful when they balance that, when they have both the very sad parts and the very funny parts. Kalena's saying um, snakes, and that's one, you know what? Kalena's love for snakes is something that actually inspires me because it makes me think how we, we look at things and we think, we don't think about how beautiful they are. We think about maybe how creepy they are, but if you really looked at them, they're beautiful. The way I have a lot of snakes on my property. She has some snakes in her house that I have on my property. But when you look at how they go like this, they're really elegant. And that takes us to dancing movies. Juliana likes dancing movies. And snakes and dancing movies are kind of similar because of the way they move. They're so beautiful. But Juliana, why do you like dancing movies, honey? Do you know how to unmute yourself? Yeah, good. Because um, I want to be a better dancer and get in more dancing movies. You want so when you see people in dancing movies, it makes you want to do it too. Yeah, Galena, don't be afraid of snakes. They're so lovely, and they eat mice. <laughs> I have every morning I get up, and there's a dead mouse beside my car. This morning there was half a dead mouse beside my car because my cats. I have three cats, and they love to give us presents. Sometimes there's a dead mouse in a boot. Sometimes there's a dead mouse beside the bed. They love to be mousers. You're scared of snakes, Christian? Oh, well, there are some that are scary, but most of them are not. Most of them are so sweet. I have to stop my dogs from eating them, though, because they, like, they think they're yummy. Which is, yeah, I know. I heart them, too. Um, so these things inspire us. These things make us go, <laughs> Bentley, you look like... Oh my goodness, this is too much snake story. <laughs> These things that inspire us, they're very important. And that's why this art gallery is very important to me. Because what they do is they help artists. They inspire artists to connect. So when we connect with each other, when we as actors and an acting coach connect with each other, we feel better and stronger about what we do. I, I coach you with what I know, what I've learned over the last 30 years in coaching, 
and you coach me with the experience of your life. So I get to see what your lives are life, like, and they fill me with really good stories. And that's important for a coach. A coach needs to have clients with really good stories. Um, spiders eat mosquitoes. That's true. Yes. Although I really don't need to have any more spider webs around my house. Um, but yes, you, you, we need to fill each other with inspiration. And I fill you with the kind of inspiration because I give you some, some, some knowledge. And you fill me with inspiration because you give me your experience. So when Christian told me about the hotel for dogs, if I didn't have to teach, I could now go watch that film and cry like a baby because anything that has anything to do with dogs, I'm going to cry like a baby. It's true. My Dog Skip is my favorite movie of all time. Don't watch it if you don't want to cry like a baby. It, I love that movie so much. It's also really funny too, but it's, and it's perfect for kids. It's a kid's movie, but you will cry because it's, it's like, it's one of those shows. So good. I watched it with my son and he put his arm around me. He's like, mommy, it's going to be okay. It's just a movie. <laughs> and I'm like, ah. But we, we, we enrich each other. We inspire each other. We give each other stories. We give each other information. We help each other. And that's what this art gallery does. And it connects us. Nourishing is, we usually hear the word nourish when it has to do with food. Food nourishes your body. So, um, so for example, a dragonfly is nourished by a mosquito. A mosquito is food for a dragonfly and it nourishes them. Nourishing it makes it feel, nourishing makes it healthy and um, makes it full of energy and all that kind of stuff. So, so when you nourish something, you're making it better. Art nourishes the part of you that feels really good when you see something beautiful like a sunset or when you're at, when you're out on a river or something boat boating or when you're in the ocean the feel, the part of you that feels so good when you're in nature is the part of you that feels so good when you're with art so art makes us feel nourished in in what people refer to as our soul <laughs> You're making some art right now, Kalena. That's beautiful. Um, and when we when we are inspired, connected, and nourished, so when when we have things that make us feel good, and we feel good together, then we can create beautiful art. And so that's what this gallery does. So when when you're um, Create. Yes, exactly. Create. Yes, exactly. To create is to feel connected to each other, is to feel inspired, is to feel nourished. It's a really wonderful thing. And I, I just love this gallery because what they do is they make it possible for artists who might not have lots of money to come and stay there for a month and do art. A hundred dollars to stay in a beautiful place, a hundred dollars a month to stay in a beautiful place to do art stunning absolutely stunning so that's what this place does so this is some of the kind of work that they do um there's music so there's somebody playing a harp there as you can see i don't know if you can see this can you see this page yeah so there's a band playing with a stand-up bass and a harp Isn't that beautiful that inspires me there's somebody doing pottery and that's my friend Tasha. <laughs> I didn't realize that was her till just now. That was my friend Tasha doing pottery. There's an art opening with somebody's art, some friend's art. Oh, this is my neighbor. These are my neighbors playing a show. And this is my friend Theo. He made the documentary I was telling you about our town. So these are his, his other pieces. So he'll do a whole wall like this. There's one in my studio actually. And it's, he'll put wood and found pieces of, he'll put boards and found pieces of wood all over the wall and make fun little art for it. 
this is um, the ocean where the gallery is, but it's a very foggy day that day. Um, but you can go for a swim there anytime. Here's a few more artists, some friends of mine. A dog, because yes, we always need to have dogs to inspire us. And you can have a dog in this art gallery. So this is more pottery, beautiful pottery, um, and some paintings. And so you can, what they'll do there is they'll put up a whole bunch of um, uh, canvases and you can go in and paint or make sculptures, that kind of thing. So there's all sorts of beautiful spaces in here where you can work and do art and it's just lovely. And there's some outdoor art. So this is right, this gallery is right in the middle of the forest as well. So you'll see art outside as well as inside. And there, that's, that's just the ocean nearby. So these are the places and these are the facilities or the places where you can make these things. So it's really lovely place. Um, and you can go there and be inspired and create with other people. And this is what it looks like. This is actually what the gallery looks like. It's one of the people who is um, one of the artists who's living there for $100 a month now. Um, you do pottery? That's great. It is a cool place, isn't it? Yeah. So it has an elevators if you need to use a wheelchair to get in, which is great. So you can get up to the second floor. Um, this is where people eat together. There's a bedroom for if you're staying there. There's also a couple of other um, places that you can um, rent out and other, other buildings that you can rent out to stay in and write if you want to or do paintings. So each place has is its special little place. There's a fireplace. Um, there's a, all sorts of stuff. And in here, you can't really see it in this gallery area, but there's that's where you do the puppet show. Or you could do acting. I'm thinking once COVID is over, I'm going to do a workshop there where everybody can come and stay in and we'll do a workshop um, for acting. So so that's that's the place. So that's a little thing that we're going to be you're going to be doing a documentary about. I'm going to send you your lines. You're not going to have a whole lot, but I want it to feel very inspired, creative, nourished, all those things. So you're going to you're going to we're making a little documentary for my friend Nancy whose gallery that is. And um you are going to <laughs> you do pottery, not pottery. Yeah. We, we do, oh, yeah, that's beautiful. And you were inspired by seeing the pottery to go get that and show us. Her pottery of a snake, I love that. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. So, does everybody get the idea for the documentary that we're gonna do? Go ahead, hon, go ahead. For the cheek commercial, do you want me and Isabel to do it separately or together? Like what would you like to do? What? What would you like to do? Together, since it's easier, so we don't have- We to have an idea together, so. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. I'm so sorry for not getting it in. We just had a lot what? of stuff. Um, crazy stuff going on, so. Really? Okay, well, you know what? Don't, I, want, I don't want anybody to worry about not getting things in on time. I have to edit all these. So it, it will take me at least a month to edit all the films the, the series pieces and the document and the commercial. So it's no big deal if it takes a little while to come in. I'm not in a rush and you don't need to apologize. I know everybody has a life. This is not a course about getting things done right away. This is a course. Yeah, I did, honey. I'll, I'll t I haven't taken a look at it yet, but I got the email. So I have quite a few students to go through and look at everybody's. I'm still going through all the series stuff too, but I've edited a few of the commercials and they look really good. So that's wonderful. Um, some of the editing I'm going to do, I'm going to add other people to your commercial or other voices. So for example, um, in, I think I've got one here. Hang on for a sec. Let me see if I've got Tara's commercial I can show you guys. If you can stay for just a, a little second, I'll just show you her commercial so you can see. So I, there's stuff called stock, something called stock footage. So I added, this is Tara's commercial that she sent me, but I added the stock footage to it because it really went well with the commercial. So I'm trying to make, um, make little stories out of what you send. 
So I'll play it for you now. It might not sound as good because you know how it is when you do share screen, but we'll try. Can you see it? Can everybody see it? Okay. Is there any more tea? Oh. So those people were not in the, 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 she doesn't know them. This is just stock footage, which means somebody shot this so people could use it in whatever they're, they're doing. So I just added it to them. And then I added the voices and the music and all that kind of stuff. So that will be in, in all of your commercials too. Not, not the same but something like that. Um, so does everybody get that? I got a question. I think that's, I think that's it. So <laughs> I will send you what your dialogue is for the, the documentary, but like I said, it's no rush. Nobody has to be um, worried about all that kind of stuff. Did you wanna show me something? I see a little, can you hold it up, your inspiration there? Twins? Oh, nice. Did you draw that? That's amazing. Wow. That's really good. You're inspired to show us. Okay, that's it for us. I got a blast. I got to prep my grown-ups class now. So I will see you guys next week, and I'll send you the, the dialogue. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.